Happy Friday evening right here on TalkCast PDX. I'm Justin McDonald. Welcome to the show. Uh, we were on a little hiatus for the holidays. Feel pretty good though right now. We're back in the saddle. Things are clicking, if you will. Things are moving along. Of course, the country is still chaotic as ever, but uh, this is the no politics zone. So we skip the politics. We don't mess with that. Uh, so we wa- we'd like to stay positive, okay? We like to have a good time. <laughs> This show is all about having a good time. Uh, I hope you're having a good time tonight. We got a great little program for you. We're going to have my Instagram interview. We're going to talk to our good friend Megan Bauer here in just a couple moments. And then also we're going to have things I say while I'm driving. And this is the Road Rage Edition. You're going to love it. All right. It's going to be a good time and we're going to have some fun. So let's not waste any time at all. Let's go ahead and get right into the program. It's time for the My Instagram interview. All right, it's time for my Instagram interview right here on the Justin McDonald Show. It's Friday night, so you know we're just hanging out, having a good time. And I'm on Instagram quite a bit. Uh, I, you know, I do Facebook a little bit. Uh, I, I don't do Twitter very much, but I'm on Instagram a lot. And my guest now is Megan Bauer. And I met you, is it, should I say Megan L. Bauer? Would you rather prefer that? Oh, whatever. MLB are my initials. People call me MLB, Bauer, Megan, whatever works. Major League Baseball. <laughs> yep. Um, but, uh, okay, well, we'll just stick with that. And on Instagram, you're MLB in the industry. Um, yeah. And, uh, that industry is primarily cannabis, I, I, I guess, I'm assuming. Yeah, I, I started. Know, I'm just saying. It's like, <laughs> uh, how long have you been in that industry? I've been in the cannabis industry for a little bit over six years now. That's what I moved back up to Oregon to do. I originally graduated from Oregon State and then thought I was going to get involved in the cannabis industry through law. So I was a legal assistant for a while and then decided that was not the route I was going to take. <laughs> and, uh, Moved up to Portland and started bud tending, and that's really how I got started in the industry. What year did you move to Portland? I moved to Portland um, when it was still medical going on, probably a year and a half before that. Oh, okay. Transition into rec. That, that's cool. Yeah, that was a weird transition. I was there for that too, and uh, that was yeah. an interesting thing. So it was a um, huge learning experience. Yeah. Well, we'll get back uh, to that here in a moment. Uh, the one thing that caught my eye on your Instagram account when I, you know, I follow you, so I see your posts quite a bit, and I saw that you were going through a huge jerk, um, and it looked like I was like I couldn't could probably figure it out right away, and then I was like, oh, I realized what had happened, um, and I know several other people in the same situation. So I just wanted to talk to you about it really quick because I think you know. Uh, women these days they have a lot of pressure. They've always had a lot of pressure. Everybody seems to have a lot of pressure on how they want to look and how they want to be and all that stuff. And you know, that, that's your right and your freedoms to do those things. But um, what led you, before I get you down that path, tell the people what actually your journey was, what had happened. Yeah. So eight years ago, um, I was, I've always been a competitive athletic person, did sports all throughout growing up in high school. And then in college, I didn't play any sports, but I channeled that through bodybuilding. So I was training competitively, um, weightlifting and doing the bikini division of bodybuilding competitions. So I was in the fitness industry Um, And that journey basically led me to getting breast implants, which eight years later, I figured out were making me sick and my body was rejecting them. So um, I had a bunch of different symptoms. They, the best way to describe it is uh, autoimmune disorder is how they presented. So I was developing a bunch of different food intolerances, uh, digestive issues, IBS symptoms, um, chronic inflammatory response, and also 
like heart palpitations, anxiety, and a bunch of different things like that that were all caused from the implants. Yeah, I mean, did you think about it right away or was it like just eventually or like, this is what's happening? No, I had no idea this was even a possibility. Um, eight years ago when I got them, black box warnings were not required. And that's a new thing within the past year or two. The FDA required that implants now list that this is a possibility um, so that you know that before you're making the decision, which I had no idea. So it took me a while of basically figuring out these different symptoms. And it wasn't until I read articles from other women who linked it all together and realized that it was their breast implants that had triggered that. One time we don't mind government interference uh, when it comes to the health uh, side of things. Um, so when you figured that out, you decided you don't want them no more. How does, yeah. that, I mean, how does that happen? I mean, uh, how's that process? It's got to be a long and kind of painful decision and not mention recovery. How does that work? It's extremely different for every person. But for me, once I had an idea that this is what was causing my symptoms, mm -hmm. I was so relieved that there was no question that I wanted to get them taken out. I mean, I had stopped competing and fitness competitions anyway. Um, and just, yeah, really was ready to jump in and take the chance of if this helps me, I'm absolutely going to try and get them removed. So yeah. You went for the, you understand you're a little older now. We all know the self-worth. We think about it a little more and things like that. I mean, that's just, uh, you know, but uh, I mean, I applaud you for making that tough decision to have to do that and having to make that decision to have them in the first place. And that's just a tough thing all the way around. And I'm glad you're doing well. How are you feeling now? How long has it been since uh, you've had things uh, taken care of? I am just over two months post explant. Um, and I'm, I mean, I'm doing great. I would say that at least. It's hard to put a number on it, but maybe 80% of the symptoms I was dealing with um, stopped immediately. And I know that it's going to take time for everything to kind of settle back in and um, for my health to get back to its you know, greatest potential. But yeah, I'm in a great stage of my body's healed from surgery now. So I'm basically entering the detox phase of the undoing of all of that. That's really good, and uh, taking care of your health. I, I see on your, you know, you're always running or doing something, and you always have your main man with you. Yes, Leo. Leo. <laughs> uh, I he is a nice. picture of Leo and I uh, at Oregon's finest. He's a great little dog. He's not so little anymore. He's a big dog now, isn't he? Yep, he's like two and a half years old. <laughs> he's my little English Springer Spaniel sidekick. <laughs> yeah, he's adorable, and uh, he seems to be well behaved for the most part. Right. In public, he knows when to behave. Well, those six years, well, I really appreciate you being uh, brave and telling us, uh, talking about that a little bit. Uh, I, you know, if people get anything out of it, you know, you want to tell them, you know, think about you, think about the health of you uh, before. Yeah, all about how, how you feel. Who cares what anybody else thinks, right? Think about the exactly. health of you. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Um, let's talk about, let's shift gears and shift your career real quick. You are... Now working with uh, actually a good friend of mine as well um, at Realistic Consulting, uh, you and Justin Lipschitz and a whole bunch of gang. You got a whole bunch of people working there, correct? Yeah, we have a great network over here at Realistic Consulting. Um, I have just kind of jumped onto the crew end of last year, and I'm really excited about it. I'm helping bring on um, specializing in sales, which is what I've been doing in the cannabis industry for about six years now. Right. Um, so um, when you guys, uh, what do you guys uh, help people do? Tell me what, what you guys do for, for people who are in the cannabis industry. We have um, a lot of different relationships that we've been cultivating in the cannabis industry, um, helping people at all different stages in the industry, whether they're trying to get a license, we can help with that, or if they're trying to optimize their system, if they need help with compliance, or if they're just ready to take it to the next level, we work with all sorts of different folks. That's cool, because as we all know, that industry is not easy to navigate by yourself. 
And if you are a business person, you want every dollar that you can make to, you know, to be made. Uh, and consulting, you know, some people poop poop consulting in some industries, but there are some industries where you just need to have it. I mean, you just have to have it. And I think cannabis industry is that one, one of those industries that you have to have something, somebody to hold your hand, unless you're an expert already. You know, unless you're like, absolutely, I, but I still think it you never stop learning, so that's how I kind of look at things. Um, what were you gonna say? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, you're good. As yeah, just with the level of compliance and legality in this, you absolutely, I mean, the stronger team you can have, then you might as well focus on your craft and let other people handle the compliance part of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think you guys are doing a great thing, and uh helping people get through that because like I said I've seen it firsthand and it's not pretty when you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Sure. That can be more expensive than a consultant. <laughs> <laughs> um, well I appreciate you uh, joining me uh, on the Justin McDonald show. Um, it's our little Friday night pen where we can blow off steam and just hang out and talk to people about life and what's going on and no politics involved and I hate politics. I hate it. I don't know about you, but I hate politics. It's nice to get a break from it right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm ready to talk sports, if anything. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of where I'm at nowadays. It's like, let's talk about sports. That'd be great. Um, but uh, tell us, uh, the web, do you have a website for Realistic? Yeah, it, you can just go to www.realistic.biz. Dot biz. All right. And you can follow it on Instagram. And uh, that would, I'm sure you have an Instagram handle as well for it. Yeah, our Instagram handle is at realistic underscore consulting. Excellent. Well, Megan Bauer, thank you so much. MLB, and uh, I'm bummed that Leo can join us. He's sitting at your feet. <laughs> I'll give him some love for you. All right. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you joining us uh, on my Instagram interview right here on the Justin McDonald Show. And uh, until next time, take care of yourself. And I can tell everybody, peace. Sweet. Thanks, Justin. Justin McDonald show. Heidi ho on a Friday night. Uh, I want to thank Megan for joining us earlier on the My Instagram interview segment of the program. I really love uh, talking to all my friends on Instagram. I got tons of them. And we always chat. We always do this. We always do that. But we never get to have like face-to-face -face conversations, especially right now in the COVID-19 world. But for a long time, we just all communicate via the interweb. Whoa. That's kind of a boomer term, isn't it? I don't know. I'm I'm Gen X. I don't, I don't have time to deal with the boomers. <laughs> um, you know what? It is time for one of my favorite outlets on a Friday night. It's things I say while I'm driving. Check it out. <laughs> things I say while I'm driving. Maybe today's episode should just be the naughty things I say when I'm driving. You know, stuff like, 
Hey, get the fuck out of my way, man! Come on! Oh, jeez, man, did you see that? I can't even use this turn signal. Holy shit! Or this one. You are proving that the speed limit is 25. In the meantime, you are screwing everybody behind you! Something like that. I like to read bumper stickers too when I'm driving. Like this one, my kid is an honor student at, uh, I don't want to say the school. Those bother me the most, I think. I don't give a shit about your kid, what he does, as long as he behaves and isn't a little asshole. How about that? <laughs> Just, how about my kid's a good person? That'd be better bumper sticker. Oh, and then you got this guy going like, driving like this, like. Where am I? I don't care about anybody else. I just want to punch that person right in the face. Mm. Learn how to drive. I'm trying to turn. We get. Can I get over? Are you gonna let me over or not? Are you gonna be that person? You're not gonna let me over? Okay. Okay. I get it. All right. People wonder why I don't like to drive. Huh? Definitely don't want to get into a road rage situation with anybody else. That's why I completely mumble under my breath and scream out loud in my car most of the time. Instead of flipping the bird or, you know, shaking my fist or something like that. So eyes front! Don't engage! And how about the idiots that don't even ride their bikes in the bike lane and fucking it up for everybody else? It really bums me out. Especially when they're riding the wrong way. Jeez! Oh, and potholes! Man, you gotta be kidding me, Portland. I should get some kind of tire tax credit. Well, let's just hope we get there in one piece. That's all I want. Peace and love. When you're driving, be cool. That's gonna do it for things I say while I'm driving, right here on the Justin McDonald Show. Thanks for hanging out on this Friday night. We'll be back again next Friday. We'll have another guest. We'll do more fun stuff. I think we're going to have What's in the Bowl next week. So I'm excited for that. I want to try out those new oatmeal cream pies, uh, that new cereal. The, oh, my goodness. It looks so good. I felt like I was getting fat just by watching the guy eat it. I can't wait to do it. <laughs> but we'll do What's in the Bowl next week. We'll have a good time. Thank you so much for hanging out on the Justin McDonald Show on this Friday. Don't forget, check out TalkCastPDX.com. Got great programs there. Citizen Smith. Keeping Portland pair up normal. We got Channel Weird coming with Clyde Lewis. Excited about that. Lots of other great shows there as well. We're getting there, folks. We're getting there. Thank you so much for hanging out on a Friday night. Till next time, peace.